Weapons, weapon mods and weapon talents are core to creating a good build and defeating your opponents in the Division and the Division 2. The E3 gameplay demo showcased a lot of information that you wouldn't spot the first time watching. So we are taking a look at what weapons they showed us, their statistics and how the weapon mods work and the same for the weapon talents. In separate videos we will list the mods and their weapon stats and the weapon talents too. This is more of an explanatory video. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Let's take a look at the weapons first. The weapons come in the same six categories as in the Division 1. Assault rifles, submachine guns, shotguns, light machine guns, marksman rifles and sidearms. Each category comes with its own bonus. The assault rifle comes with health damage. This time around armor and health have different bars, so the assault rifles will put out extra damage against the health portion of the opponent and not the armor part. The submachine guns, once again, come with critical hit chance, though this is similar to the previous game, the bonus seems less great. The shotguns will come with stagger, so this remains the same. Light machine guns hold on to their damage to targets out of cover. Marksman rifles remain the same as well, with their headshot damage. And finally, we have sidearms, though we didn't see any bonus for those. In the E3 demo, we've seen 9 weapons and variants of them so far. The lightweight M4, Vector SBR.45 ACP, Military M133 Shotgun, Military M90 Shotgun, Marine Super 90 Shotgun, Tactical SASG 12K, the Military MK46, M1A CQB, SOCOM MK20 SSR, and the Military M9 Pistol. Of course, we also saw the signature weapons of the specializations, the crossbow, the grenade launcher and the 50 cal sniper rifle, but those are a different category as their signature weapons. When selecting a weapon, we can now more clearly see what the statistics of that weapon is. From top to bottom, we have the name, rarity, weapon class, weapon bonus, damage, rate of fire, magazine size, accuracy, stability, reload time and the optimal range of a weapon. This is mostly the same as the previous game, though they added the range chart to the statistics and added some numbers instead of charts here and there. Moving on to the weapon mods. This time around they were quite a bit different. Weapons, depending on the class and variant of that weapon, still have up to 4 mod slots. The optics reel, magazine, underbarrel and muzzle mods. The difference to the previous game are twofold. One, they aren't lootable items anymore, so they won't drop from caches or enemies. This time around, they're unlockable through playing with that weapon. This saves us a whole lot of time with collecting the right mods. I'm not sure what I think about this because it removes a bit of depth in creating an endgame build. Then again, simplifying this part could be good if they make it a bit harder in other areas. The second difference is that the mods now come with positive and negative traits. So for example, you can now select the low reflex side on your shotgun. This will add 30% stability, but it will lower your optimal range by 30% as well. This feature I like a lot because it means you have to be more tactical in what you equip, adding another layer of depth again. Weapon talents work in a similar way to the previous game. Your weapon automatically rolls with a weapon talent regardless of its rarity. What's new is that every weapon, until the superior rarity, only had one weapon talent instead of three. This could be because it was a demo and Massive Entertainment didn't want to show us everything they got, but Massive confirmed high-end weapons can have up to three talents. Luckily for me, because it allows us to create more build diversity and once again, it adds more depth to the game. So, the weapon, modding and talent system has changed quite a bit in the Division 2. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. I have mixed feelings about it, though it's a good thing that it's less of a grind, but I like to see that depth and diversity from the previous game return in other features of the game. Like I said, I only generally explained how all of this works. In future videos I will create lists, the mods and their stats and the same for the weapon talents. I'm also gonna be doing this for the brand sets for the gear and the gear talents for the gear as well. That concludes this video. I want to thank you for watching, so thank you. And I hopefully see you next time. Peace out.